Well, Tom Youngs, if I told you three years ago when you decided crazily, stupidly, to switch from centre to hooker and you were throwing the ball pretty much anywhere except where it should have been going, if I would have told you three years on you'd be uh, um, playing for England, four caps, and you'd be beating New Zealand, would you have laughed in my face? Yes, I probably would have done, definitely, you know. It's it's amazing what's happened. It is, you know, and it, uh, I said earlier, it's come round so quick, it does, you know. Because like last year I was on the you know bench at Leicester and then suddenly I get a few starts beginning of this season and then suddenly I'm starting against Fiji and starting against Australia and then South Africa and then, as you say, finishing up with a, a great a great uh, win on Saturday against New Zealand. Well, Fiji went really well. You had 100% in the mm -hmm. line out. So you won and uh, I gather you chose a particularly... Uh, Contemporary song on on the team bus on the way some, back. Some might say best song ever, but some might disagree. Uh, was it a rap? Was it something uh, very uh, modern? What was it? It was a I've got a brand new common after by the words. Great song. Download it. And <laughs> anybody on the team bus know what you were doing? No, not at all. So apart from my brother, probably Coley, no one else really understood <laughs> what I was doing. Did he do it in Zuma's accent as well? Yeah, I did it. In a, yeah. That, Good old Norfolk accent. That must have been truly horrendous. Yeah, I probably didn't understand a word I was saying, actually, now I've come to think of it. So, then you go on and play against Australia, and uh, it's probably fair to say, collectively, not a great team performance, really disappointing mm -hmm. for you. Then South Africa, frustrating because you, you could have and maybe mm. should have won. Yeah, definitely. And, and then we had New Zealand, and mm. for the life of me... Uh, where did that come from? Because you went from quite good to sensational. Yeah, it just all clicked, didn't it? And it was a, it was a great day and a great win. And some, you know, Manu Tolangi and it was just a wrecking ball. And well, Man Manu was sensational. Yeah, but was. but to be fair, you could pick anyone from fifteen. Yeah, look, we all played well, didn't we? We all got stuck into them, um, and um, you know, reduced the game of our lives and to beat them. And uh, it was a fantastic day. And to beat that side, that New Zealand side, especially, it was a. Uh, it was a great honour and something which will um, go down in my uh, rugby portfolio for a long time. Well, to put things in perspective, the England hooker was a former yeah. centre who was winning his fourth cap. Yeah. And the New Zealand hooker was Kevin Mialama, who was yeah. winning, I think, his 102nd cap. He was, yeah, indeed. And you went face to face with him and yeah. um, and you did okay, didn't you? Yeah, we came in for a right. He's a, a nice, lovely bloke. Had a chat with Martha and swap shirts. So it was a great honour for me to um, play against him and then swap shirts as well afterwards. I'm still struggling to work out where that came. You, and the things as well, you, I mean, I know you've got to believe you've got to win every game of rugby you ever run out onto the yeah. pitch. Otherwise, you, you've lost it before we even started, yeah. haven't you? But you genuinely believed you were going to do it, didn't you? Yeah, we did. We all, we all honestly thought we can do it. We all believed. I remember saying to my brother and Coley, I think, just believe. I just think we're going to do it this weekend. We just got it in us. On, on what basis? Don't know. <laughs> Look, we weren't far off in South Africa, but as you say, you know, from not being far off to actually winning is a is a big big step up but you know I, I just I don't know we just we trained well all week and we spoke about putting pressure on, on you, you watched some videos what, didn't watched, you watched um, the um, French play them in the final and how the French put so much pressure on them they didn't really know what to do in some regards and uh, I think it's another thing saying saying put pressure on them and then actually doing it and we did it at the weekend we you know put a lot of pressure on them and then we had a little bit of a slip up five minutes six minutes they scored two quick tries which just shows the quality of their of their site. And, uh, but then we didn't panic and we still said we're in the lead by one point, I know, but still in the lead, they've still got to try and beat us and take our time, get back up there and go from there, really. They score two tries, we'll score three. Exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, you were still winning it, even though the, yeah, moment, we were, the, we, momentum, the momentum appeared to have swung. Yeah. But you were still winning. We were still winning. And, that, and that's the thing we took out that from underneath the sticks and went into the, went into the next bit. Yeah. Um... Now, your dad would have been in the crowd, obviously. Uh, Nick, he, he played for England and beat New Zealand yeah. famously. Yeah. And now two other youngs have beaten yeah. New Zealand as well. That, that's, that's some claim yeah, in itself. It's, and, of course, you did it with your brother alongside you. Yeah, it's massive, actually. You know, And uh, with dad beating them and him always saying, you know, that's one of his memories that sticks out for a long time. Beating them in 83 and now me and brother have done it. And it's a, it's a great, great feeling and uh, something which... Um, I often say no one could take away from us, really. Now, you know what? I can't get my head around the fact that you're even talking about this because, as I say, three years ago you were a stocky centre, shall mm. we say, yeah. for, for the Leicester Tigers, and it was Heineken Mayer, wasn't it? The, it was Now Heineken. the Springbok head coach yeah. who was at Leicester who said you should, you should have a go at that yeah. hooker. And weirdly, you agreed. 
why not? <laughs> give it a crack, why not? I'm quite keen to give anything a crack at times, but yeah, look, you know, that, that was a long time ago now. <laughs> well, well, it, 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 well, it's not really in some games, but I played a lot of rugby between them, between mm. then and now, so, and... Uh, it just got better and better. And for those who don't know the story, um, you were shipped off to Nottingham, weren't you, on loan, yeah. primarily to learn how to be a hooker. Basically, yeah, to learn to retrain in a new position. And it's fair to say, good rugby player that you are, you weren't necessarily the best at hooker. No, I was terrible. When you started. I was absolutely terrible. I remember running around going, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I'm going from an, you know, an alright player to suddenly being one of the worst on the pitch. It was quite hard and difficult. You couldn't find any targets with the lineouts no, at all. No, not at all. Like, I could run around and carry the ball and all that and tackle, but the lineouts were terrible. But you know, the guys at Nottingham and uh, were very, very um, good with me and didn't get on my back. And they just knew that I'd get better and better. And it did slowly, slowly but surely get better and better. And even last season here at the Leicester Tigers, uh, you, you couldn't start, albeit mm. there was George Shooter, you mm. know, a very, very experienced former mm. England hooker. But uh, I guess the breakthrough was a few starts last season, but then getting on the summer tour for England. Yeah, that, you know, the, the getting on the summer tour was great. It was just to, to show Stu and uh, Graham Ramsey what I can do and, you know, where I'm at as a player. And then I suppose getting back and then Cocker's sort of giving me the, the nod, saying, yeah, go and, have a, go and have some starts and see how we go. And then you, you make your debut against Fiji. Nervous or probably not, knowing not, you, it's more bringing on? Yeah, bring on pretty much, yeah. And that's what I sort of had that opinion all week, you know, I'm not going to be nervous, this. I'm going to enjoy this whole moment. And, I've yeah, fought for this, I've trained for yeah, this, I've worked for I've this. I've worked for this, I'm not going to let it go by. Mm. And I don't know whether that's because I'm a little bit older now, to mm. like a young guy, he probably well, won't get excuse me, how old are you? 25. Not exactly ancient, are you? No, but in rugby terms, you know, you mm. sort of, you're more mature, you're more experienced in life in, in general. Mm. So I suppose I took that in, into that game mm. with me. 100% mm -hmm. against Fiji mm. and 100% uh, against Australia yeah. as well. You, you came up against the, the, the might of the Bocca, which was a yeah. great physical challenge. Yeah. And then New Zealand, your first hacker. Yeah. Enjoy that? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was real good. It, Intimidated um, or loved it? Loved it, to be honest. It gets you hyped up a little bit. Yeah. Got, the, got me twitching a bit, so <laughs> that's always good. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I mean, it's just worked wonderfully, but you know what rugby's like. Mm. When you're down, it can pick you up. Yeah. When you're up, it can knock you down. It can, very much so. And look, we're going to build on from that performance. And, uh, you know, say Scotland. Uh, Six Nations is a massive game, you know, but now it's back to the club and uh, looking to perform against Treviso this weekend and in the Highland Cup, which is a massive tournament for the club. And the thing about um, Scotland, everybody would say, whoa, if England play like that and it's at Twickenham, it's an easy win for England. Well, phew. Scotland wounded, written off, lost their, lost their head coach. They're going to be running easy. out on fire, aren't Scotland, they? Scotland, England, when is it ever easy, let's be honest. So, um, yeah, it'll be a cracking game to start the Six Nations off with. And of course, Dylan Hartland will be will be returning from injury. He's been very supportive, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been a good guy. You know, he's you know he's been helpful and supportive, and you know it'd be, it's, it's great to um, well you know hopefully be fighting out for the number two shirt. Yeah, well that's exactly what England wants, isn't it? Yeah, to exactly, have quality yeah. players fighting for the jersey. Yeah, so. massively. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Well, listen, congratulations, cheers, Tom, cheers, yeah. and um, here's to many more wins like that. Hey, hopefully. Yeah. Cheers.